So I've recently been seeing these two content creators named Jellybean and Red Velvety appear everywhere lately, and they both seem like TikTok-esque YouTube channels that make simple little Minecraft reaction type videos. I've seen people throw around the words comfort streamers and PNG tubers to explain this kind of content, this sorta cutesy, loud, and somewhat obnoxious type of videos, only made to be under a minute as to not fall out of the YouTube shorts category. Reacting to Bad Boy Halo's worst fan art. Oh my god, why does he look like he's crying? <laughs> why does he look kinda emo in this? Is that just me? Dwayne the Muffin Johnson. Okay, wait, this one's actually really cute. Okay, this is this is just wrong. Alongside the announcement, they revealed three new starters, and I'm going to rank them. First up, we have the grass Pokemon, Sprigatito. Okay, first of all, adorable! Not quite as cute as me, but pretty close. Now, a lot of videos have been made on these people, and I mean a lot. This seems to be the next big wave of content criticism that people are jumping on, and I don't really blame them because, you know, the bills gotta get paid, but there is something about these videos that I can't get past, and I think I know why now. So a quick introduction for Jellybean and Red Velvety, they are two Minecraft comfort streamer PNG YouTubers that generally make cutesy content mainly just reading comments or reacting to things that their subscribers send them, all in a short little time so that they can keep the ever lessening attention span that kids have these days intact. Oh yeah, the content is aimed for kids 100%, you can clearly tell just by the way they talk, or rather yell, and by the usage of their cute little avatars being appealing to a kid's eye. Jellybean's avatar has a nice shade of pinkish purple surrounding their entire body, and Red Velvety has a red bunny avatar that kids would no doubt be drawn towards, as it resembles a children's cartoon and kids would be familiar with that concept. So that's pretty simple to understand, just two people making somewhat obnoxious videos, mainly just using the TikTok formula of popularity, but applying it to YouTube instead and blowing the hell up. They even got every word they say written out, that's a classic example of how to keep an audience engaged, they know what they're doing, and they're doing it pretty damn well if you ask me. It's all part of internet content creation after all, gotta get those views and subscribers somehow. Now what makes this situation so interesting to me is the videos being made about the two of them. At first when I saw these come up in my recommended, I thought they were some sort of evil social manipulators or whatever who use their audience to attack others and that kind of stuff, but looking at the videos about them, all I can see is people calling their videos cringe with some slight genuine criticism. Like, I'm not joking, that's literally it. Haha, <laughs> your videos are cringe, oh my god, wow guys, look how cringe they are, haha, <laughs> I'm gonna criticize them in my own video. Like, I kept digging and digging for anything that had a little more substance to it, and I came out mostly empty-handed. Maybe it's just me, and I'll touch on this idea before the video ends, but I don't see the point in making all these videos on either Jellybean or Red Velvety to this degree. Now, you might be thinking, wow, that's a spicy hot take or whatever, but hear me out. Jellybean and Red Velvety make that kind of fast-paced, loud, obnoxious, TikTok-esque content like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This kind of content, while annoying to me personally, as I'm sure plenty of other content creators have made videos on the subject matter, it's just that, not the type of content that I or they would watch. I find the loudness and the constant moving words and constant pictures showing up annoying to me, but the audience they are making videos for doesn't. They like that kind of stuff. It caters to a young kid audience, and both Jellybean and Red Velvety do it pretty well if you ask me. I have a secret for you, but you can't tell anyone. So recently, people have started to ask me all the time who my favorite Dream SMP member is. People always seem to guess Dream because he has the most subscribers, Tommy because he's so funny, and Fundy for obvious reasons. I've made a huge mistake. So the other day I said if I hit 100k members in my Discord server, I would stream Just Dance in a Teletubby costume and a maid dress. You know, thinking I wouldn't hit this goal. Do you know how many members are in my Discord server right now? Now listen, I get the whole idea of, oh well, if their videos are cringe, I'm gonna react to that and say they're too loud or annoying or whatever. And frankly, if I'm being honest, I feel that in this case, it's more of a cop-out to just make fun of them rather than add some genuine criticism to why they might be doing this wrong or that wrong. The whole idea of calling cringe content criticism is so insane to me because most of the time, cringe content is a subjective thing. I can call their videos cringe, but the kids watching them can call them masterpieces, and who the hell are we to either judge on what's cringe and what's not, because it's subjective. 
When someone's criticism starts to dwell on their own personal tastes when it comes to making YouTube videos, it starts to become somewhat pretentious because it's a personal taste at the end of the day. This has become more apparent to me as time has gone on where content creators will apply their own personal taste to their critique videos and it becomes a mixture of actual criticism and then them just saying, think bad because I don't like it. If you ask me, Jelly Bean and Red Velvety's videos aren't bad, they're just not my taste along with many others. Now there are some valid criticisms to be shown and genuine advice to be talked about as well. For example, there was a twit logger that Jellybean put out saying how she was playing the new Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach game. She called one of the animatronics a pedophile as a joke, but that she didn't realize how harmful this could be and apologized for saying that. Uh, sorry, I just threw away. <laughs> you pedophile! It's past your bedtime. You must be punished. No, he's a pedophile. He's a pedophile, chat. He's a pedophile. <laughs> no me gusta. No me gusta, chat. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Chat, where the fuck do I run, chat? Where do I run? Now, some people saw this as spineless, but to me, this is more of somebody being scared to lose parts of their audience for making jokes that might be a bit edgy. This is one of those situations where Jellybean is scared of people talking bad about her, using her words against her. If I were to give actual advice and not just make fun of her like some people have been doing, it's to understand that you can't please everyone. There will be edgy jokes that come out and maybe a side of you that you don't want people to see, but those that genuinely like your content and who you are would stick by you, unless you do some really messed up shit, not just calling a video game character a pedophile for a joke. I find it really annoying that people are making fun of others for being spineless, so to speak, because people handle shit differently than others. Some people can take the heat, and others can't, and to make fun of someone who can't is just a really shitty thing to do overall in my opinion. Let them grow that backbone first, and if years from now or months from now they keep having breakdowns over small menial things, then maybe that's when they should learn to better themselves when it comes to being an internet content creator. There was also another thing Jellybean got herself into when she asked her subscribers to change their profile pictures and spam the phrase, it's not a mistake, it's a masterpiece, in her comments section. I think we can set a world record. Now hear me out. So recently, I've kind of gotten a little army of myself. If you look in my comments right now, you probably see a lot of people with the Jellybean profile picture saying, it's not a mistake, it's a masterpiece. Now this got me thinking, what if we hit a world record for the most comments on a YouTube short? I know it sounds crazy, but I think it's possible. If everybody watching this video typed, it's not a mistake, it's a masterpiece, 10 times, I think we can hit that record. Obviously, as expected, that spilled out elsewhere in many random YouTube video comments. And this is a lesson that despite telling people to do it only in your own video, you can't control the people who won't listen and will start a shitstorm for the sake of it. It reminded me of that Leafy is here situation way back in 2015 when Hiss was being spammed everywhere for a hot minute, but he never asked people to do it, his fanbase was just wild as shit. Asking people to spam stuff will always fall back on you and make you look like the bad guy because even if the intentions are good, people can misconstrue even the best of them and always fall back on, well, they asked to spam and spamming is bad so that's really bad of them. It's a good thing she made it clear in a community post to not spam other YouTubers and streamers, meaning she learned her lesson and can move on peacefully from it. Red Velvety had his own spam shit that he started just like Jellybean, asking people to change their profile pictures and spam the phrase, embrace the meow meow when doing so. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. It's a I've had enough of this. I will be starting my own cult with this image of myself as a cat boy. Why should we join your cult? Well, because my cult has a secret weapon. What's the secret weapon? The secret is that our cult has pride profile pictures that you can screenshot right now. Awesome. What will be our slogan? All you need to do is spam embrace the meow meow in every comment section you see. Obviously, the spamming thing is bad as we went over already, and this is some genuine criticism for him to learn about. I will say though, he seems to be a bit more entertaining than Jellybean in his own way. Hell, he even made a joke video where he brings in Jellybean because people kept calling him a Jellybean clone. Sounds like a male version of Jellybean. What? No, I don't. This is Jellybean with a voice changer. They talk the same. No, we don't talk the same. And no, I am not Jellybean with a voice changer. Bro, turn off the voice changer. Okay, fine. If you want me to be Jellybean so badly, I'll just give you what you want, okay? 
Are you happy now? People love self-referential humor like that, and it shows that he can take a joke and is willing to play along with it. I know there is genuine criticism to be found when talking about these content creators, but I start to find it very annoying when that criticism comes down to someone's own personal taste most of the time and trying to push that onto other people and hide it under the guise of criticism. If you think the content is shit, call it shit. Call them lazy or annoying or spineless or whatever. But don't hide behind a thin veil of, it's just criticism bro, otherwise you're just projecting your personal taste onto your audience when the video taste is subjective and in this case, clearly aimed towards kids. Both Jellybean and Red Velvety need to understand that when it comes to any sort of spamming, even if it's in good fun or for a good cause, it will always fall back on you and it's best to avoid doing anything of that sort, no matter how big or small of a content creator you are. Jellybean needs to learn that some people will do whatever it takes to make you feel bad, even if it includes pulling up a clip of you calling a video game character a pedophile because while there's genuine criticism to be had, some people go out of their way to make you look bad simply because they don't like you or the content you make. It's a strange reality to content creation, but it's one that you have to learn to understand, otherwise you'll get caught in a state of trying to please everyone and failing no matter how hard you try. I'll be honest, I didn't care about this situation at first, but then when I started to see others judging them because their videos are cringe and not really doing anything to give genuine advice, I got annoyed. The videos are clearly made for kids, the way their avatars look are clearly made for kids, the way they have the text pop up on screen and how loud they speak is clearly made for kids, so to see a few videos just making fun of the kids content and claiming it's criticism just annoyed the hell out of me. It's okay to dislike somebody's videos if it's not your taste taste, but to try to push that onto other people and claim it's bad because it's cringe, which is subjective, is just wrong. What's y'all's opinion on this situation? Are Jellybean and Red Velvety bad content creators, or do they just make videos that you wouldn't personally watch? Do you think that some people are projecting their own personal taste when it comes to video content creation, or are they valid in calling their videos cringe and bad? I noticed I didn't really touch up on Red Velvety too much in this video, I might make another talking about him if you guys want me to, so make sure to tell me your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did enjoy it make sure to like and subscribe, and as always, with all of that out of the way, I will see you guys later.